everyone, welcome to the Bulls Tabletop Hour. I am Adam Harry. I'm JR. And of course we're with Bulls. Obviously. Right, because this is the Bulls Tabletop Hour. And today we're going to be talking to you. It would be weird if it wasn't, It right? would be. Uh, that's why I was just laughing about it. was the Bulls it. Tabletop Hour we're and not, we were like, yeah, I don't know. Two, was, two dudes. Two dudes are sponsored by Loot yeah. Crate or something. Anyway, <laughs> uh, we are going to be talking to you guys about all of the tabletop news over the last week. And, yes. And uh, stuff that's coming up and exciting. Uh, we've got some cool stuff to talk about today. Yes, uh, for, obviously. Right? You can, you can see right here with your <laughs> with your human eyes. Yes. Um, we have got the Wrath and Glory uh, 40k Ooh. RPG, and we're going to tell you a little bit about that. It's really fun. It's really cool. Uh, it does some really cool things that um, other like 40k RPGs have yeah. kind of experimented with, but it has a different way of approaching some of the same problems. Yeah. Uh, we'll talk about that in a little while. We've also got the Night Haunt. Night, Night, Vault. Night Vault. Night Haunt in the Night Vault. Uh, yes. For Warhammer Underworlds, uh, which is still a part of Shadespire. It is. Uh, uh, it is. It's not a different place. It's still, You could still call it Shadespire and be right. It's true. Um, you are in Shadespire when you're playing with this. At least until you go to a different Warhammer Underworld. Uh, I guess... There are many. Yeah, there are many. Like that's Nagash the the crushed them all. He crushed them all. Found them yeah. too as well. Um, Where then, do we start? Let's let's. There's start also with, some new stuff out coming. There is some we, new we'll stuff talk coming. About we'll talk about at the end about. of the show. But where should we start, Jr? Because I feel like both of these products are really exciting for, for us for many reasons. Yes. Um, obviously, uh, I'm I'm pumped about Night Vault because of the Night Haunts in there. Right. Uh, I'm, I'm pumped also... about the 40k RPG because uh, it's I mean it's really cool. Yeah, uh, we got to play a game uh, with Ross Tompkins, the yeah. uh, designer writer guy, and uh, he was really cool and, and hosted a game for us on our and and channel. now now I've I've sat with the book for yeah. a, a few days and I'm, I'm like you're I'm, soaking I'm it in, digesting it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so I'll have we'll have the full review up, but spoiler alert, it's good. Yeah, <laughs> um, it is good. I, I mean, we have fun. Um, uh, well, let's talk about Night Vault, and then we'll come back around we'll come to back. Worth and Glorbs. Cool. Ha ha! Check it out. We actually have some built... We have some built minis to show you. The new yeah. uh, Storm casts from the yep. Sacrosanct Chamber. Uh, do, you, do you remember what these guys are called? Yes, they are called the Storm Sires Curse Breakers. Okay. Which is quite fitting uh, based on what we know about said Curse Breakers and, right. and what they're actually doing. Again, they are members from the Sacrosanct Chamber. That is the... The wizards of the Stormcast. Right. You can uh, see these wizards yes. are armored in full plate mail armor, yes. uh, carrying swords, and, but they do have magic staves. They do. So they there's do. that at least. Yeah. Um, uh, I, I've dubbed them uh, Harry, Ron, and Hermione. I like but, it. Um, which one's which? Yeah. That's a good call. Um, <laughs> but if I can take it off the cork and put it on the table, I'll swap yes. over. It needs more contrast for the green. Oh, yeah. The um, green. So that's one of the things about these models is the uh, the briar... Uh, the thorns of the Briar Queen, the, the Night Haunts, go. are very green. It's like this sickly, not quite as a uh, uh, dark green as uh, uh, the Death Guard and right. those, those those miniatures, but definitely very bright green, um, as you can see there. All really well detailed. They are single pose models. They are. They are but... also push fit. Yeah. And while we have you distracted with the minis, let me grab the sprue. I just wanted they to show this off. They are super easy to put together. Like, yeah. Like uh, you, you were doing this. It took. It didn't even take you. Like... I I built these before the show. Yeah. You, yeah. So, so real fast, uh, I'm gonna lay this sprue down. Um, we want to cut away from it real fast so that Mars can rejigger the camera. But um, you can kind of see. Uh, you can kind of see. The, the the cuts themselves look really well, re really good. It's it's actually really hard to find the seams on the models. It, it really is uh, like... because of the way they've been designed and, and and just the implementation of them. Really fine detail, of course. Like we've come to expect from Games Workshop. Let me rotate that for you just a little bit there and pull it that way. So you can you can see the chain rasps there. Yeah, um... these are the four chain rasps. Uh, actually, sorry. There's uh, there's also the hang the ever hanged miniature in there. Ah, uh, yeah. Um, you can see on the the sprue there there are pegs on a lot of the 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 bits. Let me flip it over real fast too. You can see the peg holes. And on the flip side here, if we go that way and that way, there you, go. you can also see there's peg holes and there are pegs associated with the miniatures they go together really really smooth it's super easy um i do recommend using a good set of clippers to mm -hmm. clip them off obviously and also uh um, a good sharp exacto knife just a hobby knife to yeah. clean off any excess uh burrs and stuff like that 
because the the tolerances are so tight on these um it's actually for what i found was actually really helpful is to use some plastic glue and actually use that as kind of like a lubrication with the pegs when, you, yeah, when so you're you can, connecting you can, like, them. Connect them. Yeah, uh, dry fit everything first, but don't but, snap fit uh, because they will like it, they are, they are hard to pull apart mm -hmm. uh, once you get them all locked in there. Um, but super easy to assemble. The instruction page is literally one page for <laughs> both both. Super uh, easy to do. Yeah, with. super easy. Um, but they look really good once they're built, and I think you know no matter what uh, your paint scheme is for your army. For either the uh, Stormcast or the Nighthawn, you'll be able to put these in your army pretty seamlessly because they 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 look they look they look good. amazing. Yeah, and yeah. and uh, you run night uh, night haunts, right? I do. You have a, a night haunt army that you've I been do. Building. I have been working on that uh, for a, a little little while since uh, since uh, Soul uh, War Soul came War out. Came out. Yeah. yeah. Are, are you uh, looking forward to adding these guys to your, your army list? Because the, they are uh, compatible, right? Yeah, absolutely. If, first off, uh, you could just run them as members of your chain rasp hordes if you if you so choose I mean, they to. They are chain rasps. Uh, the the Thorn Queen. Uh, uh, she is the Briar Queen. Excuse me. She is actually a Banshee. So, mm -hmm. I mean, technically, you could run her as a Banshee. But if GW follows the same pattern that they've done in the past, right, with their uh, like their their other uh, Underworlds right. warbands, we'll probably end up uh, seeing uh, be we'll probably end up seeing these uh, uh, repackaged as just a, a standalone set yeah. with their own standalone rules uh, for Age of Sigmar with with the points and a unit and maybe even special abilities for the yeah. Unit. We've seen knows? that. I mean. Before. I could definitely see her having some special abilities with yeah. that like crazy briar thorn whip thing. Yeah, absolutely. Um, the other fun thing, uh, I don't want to ignore the the, the evocators, the, yeah. the sacrosanct guys, because mo you can actually feel them as a unit of three. Yeah, uh, just regular evocators uh, already. Or you can wait. I'm sure. Again, I'm sure GW's going to repeat the and process. They might have, have some more special rules because we got yeah. the Fire Striders and they did some cool stuff. Yeah. Uh, and uh, having a unit of three and they're really good looking evocators. Yeah. Like they're like, cool. This this guy is amazing. They will they will all stand out from your other evocators, which I think is is a really cool thing. Uh, and you want a yeah. unit of three evocators because that's what powers them up enough that they can do stuff and one can die and they're still a wizard. Yeah. Um, Speaking of being wizards. Yeah. Um, this expansion, Night Vault, actually adds magic to the game. Hey. That was a good segue, Jerry. Hey, you're welcome. Uh, <laughs> so it's really cool. Uh, magic in the game was not in the first season. so It was not. Forgive me if I say addition because it, I mean season. Right. It's, it, it's this, is seasonal. Season two this is of, season two of Underworlds. Right. Shade Spire times. Right. So uh, in this season, they mm. have added magic to the game. The magic system is super easy to, to kind of mess around with. Yeah. Uh, all of the... Let me back up. To cast spells and to use magic, you have right. to be a wizard, obviously. Right. You have to be Harry Hermione. Or, or Ron. Ron, yeah. Or, or the, the, uh, the Briar Queen. Right. Um, she... Uh, they have a wizard level. The, le the, the wizard level will be a number to the left of their name like, on their card. Bellatrix. Right. <laughs> we'll call her Bellatrix. I like it. So, uh, if you take the Storm Sires... Uh, uh, the the their leader is a level two wizard. The other two guys and, and the other two are are level one wizards. Right. The uh, Queen of Thorns, she's a level two wizard. So what that means is, anytime you're using your spells or spell abilities or whatever, you're going to be rolling your spell dice instead of attack dice. Okay. They're really simple. They're new dice. Matter of fact, I think they're in this box. Well, let's let's show them off. Let's show them off. Uh, they're really pretty, actually. I, I will say that. Um, um. Oh wow. Yeah. Wow. So they're they're pretty cool looking. We haven't even opened up the dice yet. That's really cool looking. Yeah, I've been messing around with them. But they are these nice blue dice, and actually, uh, GW has has put out a set of. Let me put the. Uh, they're 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 actually coming out with a new magic set. I'm gonna put these right here, and hopefully we can get a, a shot of that. Um, but they are uh, pretty cool looking dice. They're nice and blue. So whenever you're casting your spells. She'll move the camera. Uh, whenever you're casting your spells, you're going to use these dice. Obviously, I think three is probably going to be the highest wizard level uh, eventually uh, if, if a character comes out with that. Yeah. Um, but all you're trying to do is, you're tr when you, whenever you're trying to cast a spell, uh -huh. you are trying to match the dice. Let me see if I can find a spell card real quick. Right. So, um, so you're, you're rolling these dice. Yeah. Uh, is, is it a number of dice dependent on your wizarding level? Exactly. Or? So if I'm wizard level two, I'm rolling two dice. If I'm gotcha. wizard level one, I'm rolling one die. So pretty straightforward. Super straightforward. Yeah. And you're just trying to match, uh, these are all objective cards. <laughs> you're just trying to match the symbols. 
there there is uh, there's a a crit symbol which I'll get to in a second. Uh, can we go back to the dice roll fast, Mars? Yeah. There's a crit symbol which I'll get back to in a second. Um, yeah. This one. We'll come back to the crit symbol. Uh, there is a channeling symbol which is the three lightning bolts, and then there's a focus symbol as well. So anytime you're trying to cast a spell, um, let me show this off real fast. Oh, there we go. You can kind of see that. That one requires, I believe, what is it? A focus? <coughs> I can't see that. Yeah, it is focus. So, so this, this guy. This spell requires one focus mm -hmm. uh, to, to, to successfully cast the spell. So uh, when you roll, if I'm a level 2 wizard, I'm rolling two dice. I just need to get one focus result out of two dice. So like... Boom. I did it. There you go. You've got a focus. This spell goes off. Whatever the spell card says happens. Uh, really straightforward... In that regard, the other thing is there are these are gambit spells. They they work just like the uh, the ploys and stuff like that. You're gonna play them basically at the same time you would play a ploy card. Uh, the other thing too is some of these characters. I'm looking for the stormcast deck. Oh, the storm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The stormcast. Where are they? There we go. Uh, the stormcast. Some of them, basically the the leader has a an ability as well which is an attack ability that uses magic as well so uh that's uh it's fulmination it's a range three he's a level two wizard so he's rolling two dice and it requires uh one focus uh to to get a hit it's pretty straightforward um magic is just going to be one of those new avenues uh to to get spells off to do abilities and things like that uh -huh. um i think it's going to be really interesting to see how how the player community responds yeah uh because there are 551 i want to say cards in the set let me Jeez, double check that's a lot 557 cards in the set okay um the magic system is a big part of this set mm -hmm. but it's it plays out very very similar uh we can go back to the other camp. Uh, it plays out very similar to uh, the way the typical ploy cards work and the upgrade cards work like that. So right. really so, it's just another choice instead of only having those choices. And it, it's going to be interesting to see how, how players take those into account. So Yeah, I'm, I'm interested to see like what other wizards they introduce and how yeah. they, they kind of get more out there. Because the, this is clearly like just their, their first foray. Yeah, um, and totally. And we've, we've heard rumors of other... Uh, um, Shades I mean, there are not even rumors at this point. Uh, Games Workshop oh, yeah. put out a video over the weekend, mm -hmm. uh, not over the weekend, last week, sorry, that basically confirmed the other warbands. So sweet. There are they they've come out and said there are going to be eight warbands for uh, this this the season. Night of Vault. Uh, we already have the we have the Sacred Sanct Sanct and the Night Night yeah. Haunts. We've got those two. Mm -hmm. um, they have shown off already. Uh, models for the the goblins, right? The, whatever the, those the are going to be, Moon Clan, Moon Clan guys. goblins. Uh, we know that those are coming. Yeah. They've also shown off models. Oh gosh, what was the other one they showed? Uh, the the big cave troll faction oh, with like yeah, the cave yeah, bats yeah. and the cave yes. mushrooms. That's another faction. So we've got okay. Moon those... Clan. We've got trolls. Uh, they showed off. What was the other one they showed off at the same time as the the Moon Troll? The the oh, goblins. Uh, oh. I know the they they have uh, uh, Sylvaneth Warband is on the on the way, mm -hmm. which is going to be uh, tree wraiths and uh, tree revenants and and uh, probably a, a some type of elf caster, which is going to be pretty sweet. Maybe an elf with a bow and arrow. Nah, too cliche. <laughs> <laughs> uh, they've uh, shown off the. Uh, there's going to be a chaos warband that looks like mm -hmm. they actually look a lot more like the Dark Oath uh, War Queen yeah. and the Dark Oath Chieftain more so than. Say um, chaos yeah, warriors yeah, or or, uh, or berserker or yeah, um, what's his face marauders magors marauders yeah. yeah yeah they they have a different look than um, I I, uh, I, I gotta say marauders, I, yeah. I really like the dark oath too like they're, yeah. they're kind of a cool looking faction yeah I'm very very curious to see what they do that we know uh, let's see. Uh, what else? Uh, Cars and Overlords are getting a faction. That's right. That's right. Uh, we've seen that splash screen. What do we got? So we've got uh, these two. Uh, Caradron, Dark Oath, Sylvaneth, Troll, uh, uh, goblins, goblins, Trolls. trolls. Uh, what were the other two? I forget now. I don't remember. <laughs> but uh, uh, they're out there. Uh, there's there's new stuff coming. Was it the Idenet? No, it wasn't the Deepkin. Oh, that's right. It was the uh, the Zangors. Zangors. That's right. That's right. The Zangors are, are yeah. Are the, the the eyes of the nine, I believe they're called. Yeah, so, those guys look cool. Yeah, and then I know there's another one that I'm forgetting because that was seven. Um, 
Uh, it'll it'll come. It'll come there. back. Yeah. But yeah, there are eight total factions, which is super cool. Um, that's a that's a pretty big expansion. Yeah, a lot of them are are, are magically you know infused characters. So sure. it's going to be very very interesting to see where they go with the storyline. But then you're still getting the uh, the new um, like new cards that every army can use in, yes. in in each set that comes yes. out. So even if you're playing one of the older season armies, right, you'll still have plenty of ways yep. plenty of ways to change up your own particular game. Mm-hmm. Unless you've already unlocked a play style that like works for you, lets you win games and and kill your friends until they hate you and don't want to play with you anymore. <laughs> Who does that? Abe. Yeah, that's her. Uh, <laughs> he'll be back next week, hopefully. He will be back. Uh, but, <laughs> uh, but yeah, I totally know what you mean. Uh, there, the, the new cards, uh, there's a bunch of generic cards that aren't specific to Warbands that, that will be added to the to the player pool, the deck pool. Mm-hmm. Um, I believe a lot of those cards are they should be up on the GW website. If I, I not this weekend, so. they should then be for next, sure next, next weekend. weekend when the thing is um, out because it's up for pre-order right now. Yeah, so that'll be super rad. Um, um, but yeah, it's Nightfall's got some cool stuff in it. Adds magic. It also adds uh, lethal tiles, right? Which are a new thing. Uh, um, there's there's some really cool looking 3D terrain coming out that yep. lines up with the the hexes on the board. Yep, uh, which is so super cool. It's super cool looking. Oh, and the, one other mechanic that, that they they have added to the game, if you're if you're a veteran, you'll appreciate this. This is the scatter mechanic. Okay. How this works yeah. is there's a scatter there's a scatter uh, a tile or template that you actually lay down and you kind of orient it however you want it to go. Um, and then when you once you've played it, you'll roll your you'll roll your attack dice. So uh, you'll roll your attack dice, and then that will determine how the chain works. So if it's a mm. chain of three. Mm-hmm. Uh, once you roll the dice, you cannot change the orientation of the template, though. So, uh, but you roll your attack dice, the active player that's rolling the ability then gets to choose the order in which these resolve. Oh. So you do not roll them one at a time. You roll all three, and then you say, okay, here's here's the order that they're going to go off in. Right. Which is kind of cool, because it gives players some tactical uh, flexibility and, and, you know, forethought with... I want. I want. Uh, I. I can maybe make this lightning bolt chain lightning go that way or this way or something like that. That's so, kind of cool. Yeah, and it also applies to to pushes and knockbacks. Um, one of the things I did notice about the uh, the night haunts in this, and also of course the the section guys. Yeah. There's well more so for the night haunt, night haunts. They have a lot of push and pull mechanics. Yeah, they they do. Yeah. Um, they the, can pull their opponents. They can push their opponents around. They can also. Uh, force move their own uh, chain wraps, which mm-hmm. is super handy uh, to get them in position. So yeah, because uh, positioning is super important in this game. Yeah. Whether it's securing a, an objective or making sure that you've got the right uh, right amount of assists in the fight. Yeah, uh, uh, you want to be able to control where your models are going, and if yeah. you can control where their models are, then then you can lock them down, yeah. win the fight. Uh, unless they're stormcasts, in which case when they start <laughs> defending, they get even killier. Well, these guys are a little bit different. Oh. Uh, to get them inspired, they I believe they have to cast a spell. Okay. So I mean, that makes sense. They're the, wizards. They're yeah. wizards. They're not like the other Stormcasts who are super tanky. Yeah. Um, these two uh, factions also are very, very different play styles, which is pretty cool. If you're if you're just getting into the game, um, you'll get to, to, to get to experience two different factions that play very different from each other, mm-hmm. and actually different from a lot of the other ones too. Um, like I said earlier, the Night uh, Night Hunt, the Thorns of the Briar Queen, they are very, very movement centric. Yeah. Uh, keep in mind when you play well, a turn, you only have four activations. There's seven right. models. Right. So, so that's kind of a big deal. It is kind of a big deal. Uh, learning how to play. And then on the flip side, you've got the the uh, Storm Sires, Curse Breakers. There's only three of those guys, and you have four activations. Which right. Means you're probably going to be using that last activation to draw cards or. Or, or something or like something. that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so it's just a very different, you know, mentality going in there. Like you, movement, positioning. This game is super tactical. It really is. And, it's it, like yeah. if you've never played uh, Shade Spire or anything like that, this is honestly one of the like tightest uh, yeah. uh, written rule sets they've they've made. It is. It's super tactical. Yeah. Um, it's got a, 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 a burgeoning competitive scene as well. Yeah. This game is designed for competitive play. It is uh, from the ground up. I think in in. It's just really good. It's a it, solid it, it's game. It's super cool. The games are also quick. Uh, yeah. Once you know what you're doing, uh, they they should go pretty fast. Like if, you can it, play a what a, a three round game. Oh, uh, and under we'll, under ninety minutes for sure. Yeah. But probably for, once you get going, it's like forty five. Yeah. I would say it, once you really know what you're doing, um, it's it's a really really tight rule set. So we can keep going 
jaw and on about that, but, but uh, uh, this is out. Th- this is out this weekend in retail stores. Yeah, uh, um, or pre-order it now. Yeah, uh, pre-order. It. There's a lot of reason to do that. Um, yeah. yeah, maybe even thirty minutes. But yeah, it's fa- it's fast. It's fast. Anyway, uh, let's leave behind the shadowy underworld of. Uh, uh, Shades Fire and the Night Vault contained within, which is kind of cool because that's where all the like evil prisoners and stuff. Yeah, come uh, out of. hang on before we before yeah, we jump ship, we gotta talk the... about we gotta all talk right. about the lore real fast. Back to back to Night Vault, <laughs> yeah, because because that was that was one of the cool things, right? Yeah. So, so the the Night Vault is this like big uh, undead prison. It's this prison that the uh, Cataphranes, who are like you might recognize them from having the crazy awesome artifact armor, yeah, uh, that you you can collect like. Like the pieces of uh, Exodia, um, you can collect them and put them together and become unstoppable. It's true. Uh, <laughs> I mean, you can. Pretty, pretty close to. It. Anyway, uh, uh, but we so gotta, we gotta tell them, like really fast. Shade Spire was they, run by these guys. It was run by these guys. They trapped souls in shade glass, yep. uh, and th- they did that for good, so that they could share knowledge and do all kinds of protective stuff. Like yep. they, they held out against a lot of threats from the underworld yeah. uh, but they also used it to imprison uh, like the worst criminals and stuff and they locked them away in this thing that yeah. is the Night Vault. And of course uh, using the, the shade glass to imprison these guys and, and kind of steal souls from the gash, that never goes over well. What? So he, he of course curses the city to, course. to be in this extra dimensional plane in between the uh, realm of light and darkness um, and long story short it's, it's, it's cursed. It's a cursed city. Uh, yeah, once you get exists. inside, you're trapped inside. You're you're bound to the curse too. You can't get out of the city. It you, exists outside of time. Yeah, like you, you, you fight. You fight. You die. You, you just live come back again. again. Yeah. yeah. You ride eternal. You uh, me. you yeah. you show up back at the bonfire. All the monsters have respawned. Yeah. Dark you get souls. you get the idea. Um, um, Night <clears throat> Vault is a continuation of the story from Shadespire. So, time has passed in the mortal realms to a point where. Uh, the sacrosanct chamber has been activated. Yeah, the, the necroquake. necroquake happened, which yep. damaged the shade spire thing, tears yep. the reality. Uh, people started coming in. Uh, yeah, that's where these guys come in. Yeah, the, actually, the, the curse breakers. The curse breakers are actually uh, sent by Sigmar. They volunteered to go in there, uh, being sent by Sigmar, saying, basically, "Hey, we're really good at enchantments and stuff. We want to go into the city and see if we can't rescue our our fellow stormcasts that are trapped in there and and free all the souls." So they volunteered to go in, um, and and they're really good at magic. So they're trying to, to figure out a way to break the curse. Obviously, all these new folks that are, are entering uh, into Shadespire has has caught the eye of Nagash. He's kind of pissed off too, right? Which is where the Nightball comes in, because he does what Nagash does best, and he's like, "Oh, there's a bunch of souls, a bunch of undead there who think they can they can tell me what to do." Well, do you know that I'm Nagash? And so he kind of uh, raises all the prisoners up out of the out of the um, night vault, uh, reshapes them into night haunt type specters, gives them just enough corporeal form to kill the living, uh, and twists their memories so that they still hate the living and hunger for it, but they utterly serve Nagash. Yep. Uh, and, and they're like all again. They have that sort of poetic irony that Nagash loves yep. where it's like you know if, if you were uh, uh, hanged in life you're gonna be you're hanged gonna be, in death yeah you're gonna be suffering the same problems that you always had yeah. and uh, uh, it's, it's it's really cool it's a lot of interesting stuff uh, the Stormcasts are trying to break the curse on the city yeah um, on top of trying to break the curse there's also one other thing too yeah um, they have gotten pieces of the shade glass yeah from, from Shadespire somehow I don't know how but they have been doing research on that, and uh, uh, Stormsire, the, the leader of the Stormsire's Curse Breakers, he actually thinks that the Shade Glass could be the key to, uh, to the reforging process that has been slowly stripping away the humanity from the Stormcasts. Um, so he thinks that there might not just be a cure for... Uh, uh, for Shade Spire, but yeah. a cure for Stormcasts. Right, so that's, um, that's a pretty cool development. Although, depending on who you talk to... Uh, uh, the Marauders of Chaos are also a cure for the Stormcasts. <laughs> well, they're not, because they just keep dying and, and they're stuck <laughs> yeah, in Chain Spires. Yeah, that's so, true, that's true. Um, um, well, uh, that's it now the we're leaving aside yes. Night Vault. Uh, now we're going to talk Let's do it. about Wrath and Glory. Uh, Wrath and Glory. This is a uh, role-playing game set in the grim darkness of the 41st millennium. Uh, 
Uh, it is put out by Ulysses North America, who uh, now have the 40k RPG license, which uh, with which they are doing a whole bunch. Oh yeah. Uh, this is an ambitious role-playing game, right? So, um, do you think 40k RPGs? Uh, in the past, there was uh, Dark Heresy, which was yep. excellent. Like it, it kind of brought the the world of 40k to the tabletop it in did. a way that we really wanted. Um, there were a few expansions that that kind of uh, got away from it, but then they had only war, which was also amazing. It it, it was it's one of the few things that like accurately represented the life of a, a, a guards a guards person. Yeah, because uh, you just died. Uh, you <laughs> you died, and the person next to you became your new character. <laughs> that's uh, true. Um, uh, we, we, I mean, that's like that's that's how the game goes. Uh, and they did a lot of cool stuff there. Um, but uh, uh, one of the things that that was always kind of hard. Uh, is, is like combining all of the different stuff. Yeah, like why would a space marine be rolling with a guardsman, be rolling with an inquisitor, right. be rolling with a rogue trader, be rolling with a mechanicus, be rolling with etc. And I mean, you can answer that question, right? Yeah. But what's tricky is uh, the the question of balance. And Wrath and right. Glory is, is it's ambitious because it it wants to it tries to answer that question, um, and it, instead of uh, uh, like with Dark Heresy and uh, with Only War and stuff, they had they they had rules to kind of convert and bring things over. Mm -hmm. But you would they always... were done in like a tier system where like Space Marines were a top tier uh, kind of upgrade, and um, you had to work your way up, kind of yeah. kind of like a level up system. But you couldn't play the same character, so it was kind of weird. And and, and you would like kind of lose something in the translation uh wrath and glory is kind of designed from the ground up to be uh as as ross loves to say a broad and inclusive uh system uh so if you want to <laughs> play is. i mean and, and it's true like in the game that we ran uh we played we had space marines we had a commissar we had uh uh uh, uh, um, uh admec admec tech Tech priest. Uh, and we had a priest. We had a, a an actual, mi yeah, min uh, yeah ministerium priest. There's just a lot that that's going on in in the system, and you can play it. And the way that they make that work is with the uh, the different like tiers, right? So there are uh, five tiers of play, and depending on where you are, like each each character gets a different uh, a, a different like s sort of starting character creation kind of thing. So. Uh, if you are playing at tier one, for instance, you're like you know just regular guys. You they they, they call it one among billions, right? Yeah. It's the you know you're you're a member of the militarum. You're like a, a an acolyte. You won't see a lot of things, right? Yeah. Um, but and, you won't survive a lot of things. No. Yeah. <laughs> and 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 you're not you're not. Uh, uh, sort of meant to, to kind of combine everything across all of the tiers. Like, you start to see Space Marines at, like, Tier 3, or yeah. that sort of thing. Um, uh, you, uh, or Tier 2, I think, is, is where they come in. You also see, like, uh, 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 a lot of other things, like Fire Warriors, Orc Commandos, uh, Psychers as well. Um, so, the, again, this system still uses a tiered system. Yes. Um but it's not the same tiered system from Dark Heresy, which I think yeah, this is a better job, it, honestly. It's, it's designed to uh, kind of incorporate everything. And like depending on what your starting tier is, you get different abilities and different equipment and all of this other stuff. It so also ups the difficulty. It does up the difficulty. So that was one thing I did appreciate about this game was you could run a Guardsman that's actually like a tier 3 or tier 4 character. Mm -hmm. um, but just because you are a higher tier doesn't mean necessarily that things are going to be that much easier. It does increase increase the max difficulty penalty for checks and things like that so i think that's a really good way to balance it absolutely uh and uh it, it lets you uh mix things and it makes sense right so it's not just a regular guardsman fighting alongside the space marine mm -hmm. uh it's you know it's an elite guardsman or if yeah. you're at tier four you know you're probably a, a an officer or have been through a lot yeah. before you're fighting alongside a space marine who hasn't comparably been through as much it's not a a perfect system there are a few like little idiosyncrasies which you will want to work to kind of explain away mm -hmm. um if if you want to do the idea of like everyone's starting off fresh as a daisy like brand new adventurers um uh, that's not really like you all want to start at the same tier because uh, you know right, like right. like the way they explain it is guardsmen have experience they get other stuff with them you know you, mm -hmm. you might be able to explain it away as being better trained but you Not in the need grim to, dark. Yeah. <laughs> it doesn't it doesn't fit to be fresh out of guardsman school and to be, you know, 
tier four exactly. at this point. It, you, you need to have some dirt on you before you can start claiming those bonuses. Uh, but yeah. you, you get, like, there's a lot in this game, too. So it's not yeah. just the, the tiers, right? We mentioned Tau and Orcs and stuff. So, so in the game, you can play as humans, of course. You can also play as Eldar. You can play as uh, Orcs. You can uh, play as Astartes, Adeptus Astartes. Yep. Again, they rightly recognize that you're not a human anymore at that point. Yep. <laughs> uh, you can you can even play as uh, Primaris Marines, right? If you want, which is uh, <laughs> which is really cool, actually, uh, they, because it kind of conveys that that sense of scale, right? Yeah. Um, and then, of course, <laughs> you can't yet start playing as uh, uh, fire warriors or other things. You, you can't I wouldn't, yet. I wouldn't be surprised. But, well, yeah. I mean, we're pretty sure something like that is coming. Yeah. Um, for now, Eldar and Orcs are the two Xenos that you can play as. Mm -hmm. Um, and we know that, that Ulysses, uh, the folks behind this, this team, want to add like more, some of the more personable uh, Xenos races, like like um, uh, Tau, for yeah. instance. I wouldn't be surprised if we saw some Dark Eldar. wouldn't be surprised if we saw... Um, what was the other one they talked about? Uh... You lost me. Tau, Dark Eldar... Who else would they add? I don't know. Uh, I know... They got orcs and Eldar, Dark Eldar. I guess that's it, because uh, we, we, had, we had asked them if they wanted to do Tyranids. It was Tyranids, right? Yeah. Definitely Tyranids. Definitely Tyranids, because I, I, you, you I want to roleplay as... Nom, 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 nom. <laughs> yeah, that's the problem with roleplaying as a Tyranid. You're um, just, you don't really have... You don't really have a way to, to do anything different. <laughs> right, and, and so one of the other things you, you get in this game is a lot of like the 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 stuff that you see on the tabletop. You, you can play as. You can play as uh, uh, soldiers. You can play as rogue traders. You can play as uh, adepts. You Imperial work, psychers. You can work scouts. for the Inquisition. You can be a, uh, I think we already said rogue trader. Um, there, there's just a whole lot to to play as in the in the yep. game, uh, and and that's just the starter one, right? There's yeah. a um, you're flipping through all of the classes right now. There's a ton. There's a ton. So um, like, and I say classes in the loosest sense because you well you they, know. they they call them uh, uh, frameworks in yeah. this because you you sort of build. Um, yeah, it, it's it's real interesting the way that that leveling up and gaining powers work in the uh, in this game. Because uh, yeah. you you sort of add different things to your like different talents and things that are available to you. It's 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 a very kind of familiar system, yeah. right? If you've played Dark Heresy, you you know what talents are. Yeah, yeah. Um, it, if you played pretty much any RPG, that, yeah. you know, tabletop RPG, it's gonna be very. Fam there's a lot of familiar elements. Real fast too, can we talk about uh, uh, what kind of system is this in terms of dice? Oh yeah, yeah. So we should talk about that. Um, yeah, is this so a D six system? Is it is a twenty. It is a D six system, and it, it it uses the the name of the game in the system. So it, it right. is called Wrath and Glory, uh, and it uses uh, Wrath and Glory. So when you're doing stuff, you'll roll Wrath dice. Mm -hmm. um, every time you roll a a six, because it's all it's all D six based, because it's a GW game. So why not? Um, <laughs> you've got loads. You've of got D6s. loads of them. If you've got these models, you probably have loads of d <laughs> sixes. Uh, um, uh, but anytime you roll a six, you get a point of glory. You can spend glory to you use glory dice, which do other cool things. Mm -hmm. um, you can use these to do like crazy stunts to yep. buy like extra effects on your your successful tests. Yeah. Um, you can you can gain wrath, spend to gain glory, spend glory to increase your wrath. It's this vicious cycle of wrath and glory that helps you be uh, a heroic adventurer. If wrath the is galaxy. something that the, the game master uses, right? Right. How does that one work? Uh, so that one, that one's still, I'm trying to, uh, it's, it's a, like a, if you played any of the fate systems, it's like one right. of the, one of the things that the GM can use to meddle with. That's what I was guys. getting at, yeah. Yeah, like, um, uh, they have a, a much better uh, or a, a, a framework for like how to use it exactly. Right. Um, uh, but to kind of give you the gist of it, if you want to mess with stuff or if like they're succeeding but you're like, okay, yes, you succeed but at a cost, you right. can spend wrath uh, which the party will just accumulate yeah. over the course of the, the game. Basically, the pair, the players won't just generate glory as they're playing. They will al also generate wrath, which the, right. the game master can use to mess with results in a way that is thematic and appropriate. Mm -hmm. So, like Jared said, you might succeed. Say you had to open, I don't know, the the shuttle bay doors. Right. Cool. You did it, but uh, here's a wrath. I'm going to spend a wrath to say that not only did you <clears> open it, but you also something bad happened. You forgot to turn on, you know, air pressure. Or whatever. Yeah. You 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 forgot to close the shuttle bay, or you didn't realize the shuttle bay on the other side was was open to space, and right. now you're all being 
Yeah, so out. now everybody needs to make checks or you get sucked out. Or, or you set off all the alarms in the <laughs> yeah. ship or something. There's there's a lot you can do, and it, it's it's this really cool system. Uh, th- despite for how crunchy this game is, and for how like like especially focused on on the the combat of 40k, because I mean because it is it is 40k. It's 40k, right? You, yeah. You're 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 playing combat based classes. There's no yeah. like diplomatic adept or uh, uh, di- departmento munitorum uh, uh, like like scribe. Uh, which I mean, there could be. I like you could, you could try that character. I would, I would love to see that. You would that. probably die real fast. Uh, uh, just just play like some some go full like like Warhammer Fantasy style RPG. Oh man, because because that's the one where you could play like tax collectors and and uh, bailiffs and uh, dog catch rat catchers <laughs> right. stuff like that. You I had to work your right. way up to dog catcher, right, uh, but right. you could just play like some you know I'm I'm from the administratum. I'm a I'm a I'm a paperwork. Yeah. Uh, filer. I'm a scribe in the administration. Yeah. I'm um, a remembrancer. I don't have any guns. I just I just wash. Um, yeah. but, but uh, which would be terrible. It, or <laughs> and hilarious. would it? Uh, but so so like when you're facing a demon, uh, yeah. you're really gonna wish you had at least a las pistol and not like your yeah, your probably, auto quill. I mean, well, to be fair, against a, a demon like las pistol auto quill, it's about the same it's difference. A, They're both equally as lethal. There you go. <laughs> I'm gonna poke you with this pillar, <laughs> shine a flashlight in your eyes. It's the same. Same difference. Anyway, um, so there's a lot of combat and a lot of fighting and a lot of the the stunt system and all of the the rules are are like there's a huge chunk of this book that's built around uh, combat. But for for all of that, um, it is surprisingly narrative driven as yeah. well. Um, the uh, I mean, you, you saw like when when you create characters, you're kind of building in role playing hooks, and you get uh, experience or or, or um, stuff for doing things that your character should be doing. Yeah. So like on your uh, character sheet, if you're being a playing a, a priest of the ecclesiarchy, right? Yeah. Uh, you uh, you might gain XP if you spend spend a scene sort of uh, spreading the word of the emperor. Yeah, or, or get bonuses and so on. Yeah. yeah. If if you are a, a, a space marine, uh, you could get a bonus for recounting a war story of the past. You know. Those are those cards, right, that we mm-hmm. used in yeah. the game. Yeah. 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 So that was a really cool mechanic. Uh, at the start of the session, mm-hmm. uh, we all got handed uh, kind of the narrative. I don't know what they were called, but they were they were cards that were used uh, that you could you could choose to activate on yeah, your I wanna, turn. I want to see if I can find um, it. I don't remember what they were called exactly because it was a while since we played. Yeah. Uh, but it was really cool because you could use those cards, and if you used them uh, in a narrative fashion, uh, they would like guarantee successes or give you bonuses or, or to, to checks and stuff like that. Um, I thought that was a really neat mechanic, and I wish I remember the name of what those cards were called. I I do as well, cause like I even I even read they have more examples of that kind of stuff, and I even <sighs> yeah. They're, but there's such a cool way to do it. I did it with uh, the 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 um the the imperial imperial priest I was playing. Yep. I used it to uh, give a rousing speech and to cause an auto success. Uh, we were in the in the game session we played the the, the box of uh, mm-hmm. the shadows, right? Um, that was a really fun session, and uh, yeah, it was just a really neat mechanic. It wasn't some, some, something that I, I have seen used uh, in a game like this before. Again, this was a very combat-heavy game, but there's there's still some really cool narrative hooks that you can tap into and uh, just kind of kind of use to to further the actual story going on, as opposed to just. I'm a space marine, and I'm rolling a bunch of d6s trying to kill everything. Cause, right. It, it, I mean, you can. You can, but it's it's nice because they reinforce the the yeah. story of your character with, um, with some mechanics that that like actually benefit yes. you in the game. So you are incentivized to think about like your character, and and they have uh, 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 some cool prompts for creating your characters. Like if yes. you were playing a. A, an orc boy. Uh, what have you What have you done? What is your ambition as an orc boy? Do you want to? I want to like, get bigger and become a war. Yeah. Boss. Do you want to become a war boss? <laughs> do you want to find like the biggest and bestest gun? Ever? And like that stuff leads to so many cool moments. Because like, when I was reading yeah. through the character creation, I, I like fell in love with the idea of playing an orc who just wants to shoot the biggest gun. I think it's hilarious. I think it'd be really funny to play it play as an orc. Because uh-huh. like I don't know, you just got. I just want to get bigger so I can be the war boss one day. 
I gotta hit the gym. I got. I gotta hit the gym. I gotta hit the gym, guys. I don't know. <laughs> I'm gym always. Look, I'm always looking for a fight. Can I eat that? Will it make me bigger? <laughs> and, but but then like later on in in higher tiers when you when you like are mutated hideously by a psyker yeah. and and grow to five times your size. Yes. You know you're like yes I have done I've it. I've done it. I can be the war boss now. And yeah. uh, uh, that's that's sort of what. Uh, that's sort of what the game is all about, is, like, finding those moments and fulfilling those kinds of goals, right? Yeah. Uh, it's just a really good system. Uh, I, I really hope that we get uh, a chance to play more of it. Because yeah. it was really fun. Again, like Jay was saying, the character creation is really fun. You can come up with a crazy theme that, that is appropriate and, and kind of run with it because of the different options. Um, you can also lean on the uh, kind of the, the dark heresy style of, mm -hmm. of, of being of a rogue being, trader or, or, or an inquisitor yeah, and, and the and, retinue and being able to um, have a mixed you know Eldar mm -hmm. orc mer, mer, maybe not marine but mixed, mixed Eldar orc and, and imperial agents running around mm -hmm. um, uh, there, which, I mean there's there's a yeah. lot you could play a squad of rangers you could yeah. play uh, you know who are who are sent into the imperium to try and figure out uh, what's going on? And the whole thing takes place in the Imperium Nihil